this video will demonstrate a ball projectile um, using the Creo mechanism analysis. So we'll start by selecting our working directory. So in my case, it's under Creo examples, new folder, let's call it, say, ball projectile. Press OK, OK, and I can start a new part. I can call it simply ball, let's say one, and press OK. The first thing I want to do is make sure the correct units are assigned to this. So under File, Prepare, Model Properties, I want to change that to millimeter newton seconds and close and I can also assign a material property for it which is let's say a low carbon steel yes to make the material consistent with the units and press OK we can then close this um, dialog and the next step is to create the geometry for the the ball itself and we can do that using the front plane as a sketch plane and do a revolve on it so we can start an arc for example center and ends so the center point of the arc starting point and ending point middle button to finish that and can change the diameter or the radius here. So if I put 10 for the radius, diameter is going to be 20 millimeters. So to enclose this sketch, I'll need to create a, a line from that point to that point and press middle button and press um, escape and that will close uh, my sketch and we can see that the internal surface is now shaded orange so um, that's ready to be pressing ctrl d to bring back to view that's ready to be um, revolved so if i press ok now this um, dashboard is looking for an axis so if you look at the status bar it asks for a selection of straight curve or an edge axis or axis of coordinate system. So I want to choose the Z axis here. So that creates the ball um, as a sphere. So I can press OK to complete the ball. So essentially that's the ball part completed. But in order to be able to apply, um, say, initial conditions or measures to this ball, it will be useful to create a, a datum point on the wall. So an easy way to create it is by using a point, um, say using offset coordinate system, click on that. And under placement, it's asking for a reference and that's the reference for the coordinate system. So we can choose the default coordinate system for this part. And it's going to be Cartesian. And if you click on this box here, that will name point zero, and you can identify where it's going to be placed in relation to that coordinate system. So zero, zero, zero for X, Y, Z is fine for me. So press OK for that, and that creates my point zero. And that completes the ball part. One thing before we close this part, is we can check its mass and uh, make sure it's okay and the uh, information so we can go to file prepare again and model properties and you can check under information here what is the say density and what's the mass remember that density is entered as tons per millimeter cube and mass is measured in terms of tons 
So we can easily convert this back to kilograms and make sure that it's as you expected. As well as the mass information, you have got the inertia tensors and principal moments of inertia, etc. So we can close that and close this view and save the ball part and then um, start an assembly. So we'll say new assembly and call it um, ball projectile let's say and press OK and as usual we'll go back to file prepare model properties and then make sure the units are consistent again so I've chosen the same unit system here millimeters newton seconds close and then I can close this window and then the first thing I want to do is add a reference point in this assembly coordinate system where that will represent the ground effectively so I can do that under point offset coordinate system and it's looking for a reference so that reference is going to be the assembly coordinate system and then if I click just under the name it creates a point zero so that's assembly point zero again XYZ are zero press OK so you can see APNT zero on the um, tree if sometimes uh, you can't see certain items you can go to tree filters and make sure um, you highlight the important display features and then press OK so you can see everything you need to so that's essentially the um, ground system is ready for the ball to be assembled with so I can assemble the ball so select the ball part open that you can place it anywhere you like and we'll need to create some planner connections so I want to connect the front plane to the assembly front plane let's say using uh, the planner option here so first thing to do is click on planner and then assembly front uh, so that connects the two front um, datum planes of the part and the assembly so if you click on placement you see that there will be another translation option and translation to option so we can do that by clicking that translation so you can take this ball and still drag it in the space and it might help you to select the right uh, location so the first one I want to select is let's say the right datum plane on the ball and the right datum plane on the assembly so it creates um, a distance of 18 millimeters because it was uh, specified as that so you can still move the ball around but that's the current position and I want to enter zero so that it's actually aligned um, with these datum planes so I can set that as zero point and then enable the regeneration value and I can then go to translation access 2 and do the same for the top on the uh, ball datum plane and assembly top. So these two again have a distance of 8 uh, millimeters specified and I can change that to 0 and then just set that as my 0 position and enable regeneration value. So that completes my uh, placement of this ball and I can accept um, and apply this um, position of the ball. Now if you go to um, the assembly you can still drag the ball, you can select the ball and still drag it in the 
space, um, you can create snapshots and find certain positions for it. Um, let's say if it was here that I wanted to leave it, um, you would want to go back to the original location before you rerun an analysis. So if you notice at the bottom uh, status bar, you'll find um, the regeneration toolbar. So if you click on this, that um, brings up the regeneration manager. And all I want to do is regenerate. So that puts the ball back in um, the original place that I wanted to start with. There is still a small rotation that can be also aligned as well, but in this case, I'm not worried about it. I'll just leave it as it is. So the ball is essentially ready to go into the mechanism analysis. We can start the mechanisms under applications. You can choose mechanism and um, the first thing I want to do is apply um, an initial velocity to this ball. So I can do that under um, here in this toolbar. So that's that initial condition. And if I click that, um, I can select this particular button to define a velocity at a point. So if I do that, it asks me to select an item. The item I want to select is the point that I've created on the ball. So if I click the triangle, this will open up and I should be able to see uh, point zero here. If you can't see it, you might need to check your three filters, make sure some of those items are highlighted. So if I can click on that one, it's accepting the point velocity one, for example, and I want to enter a magnitude of, in this example, just as say, thousand millimeters a second and I want the ball to be thrown at 45 degrees angle um, so I need to enter x and y value of 1 and z as 0 so that gives me 45 degree vector angle essentially so that's the initial condition specified and I can press OK and I need to make sure gravity is correct. So that's my gravitational constant in the negative y-axis. That's OK. And I can create an analysis. And the type of analysis that I need to create is a dynamic analysis. So if I right-click under analysis, select new, it's say, giving an automatic name analysis definition one. I want to change the type to dynamic. And the duration, I want to keep it short, let's say 0 0.1, 0 0.2 seconds or something like that. And the frame rate, um, can go up. So if you want to say put 100 frame rate, that will create 100 um, frames in one second. Um, so for a 0.2 second analysis, it's creating uh, 21 frames. Um, we can decide whether that was accurate enough. So we can say go ahead with this one just now, but then um, to refine the analysis, we can increase it and see um, the difference of putting more frames in the analysis. It'll take longer, of course, the more frames you create. So I want to use this um, length and rate, essentially. Um, also want to use an initial configuration, which I specified as initial conditions one. So that was one meters per second at 45 degree angle. I haven't specified any termination conditions yet. So I guess I'm to say OK to that. And then um, if you go to analysis, you can click on triangle. And that's your analysis definition one there. If you right click on that, you can do a run. 
and you can see that the ball is going in the air so that's good um, we can review what happened so we can go to playbacks and under analysis definition one we can do an animation so we can do uh, click on that one and see how the ball is moving in the air um, okay the ball is moving in the right direction but um, there's something else that we need to activate of course we haven't put in the gravity so we can go back and apply that as well make sure that's activated so let's close the animation we can put the ball back to its original location so that's the regeneration manager there regenerate and then um, to activate the gravity you'll need to go back to analysis right click on the analysis definition edit it and if you notice there's an external loads tab here so what I need to do is check that box to enable gravity and press OK and then I can run the analysis from here. Do you want to overwrite it? Yes. So now we can see that the ball is actually um, doing the parabolic motion that we expected. So if we play this animation again, so that's going in the right direction. Uh, rising and falling back again. So how do we measure now um, what is the maximum height or maximum distance traveled etc within this time frame. To be able to do that what we need to do is create measures and if you look at the ribbon this is the option to create measures. So what we want to create is a position type measure. So if you want to measure, say, the X position, uh, we can give it any name like X position, etc. And the type is going to be position. And from where do you want to measure it? So if I click on that, I can select the datum point, point zero that cr I created on the ball. And I want to measure it with respect to the world coordinate system. And this one will be position in X and it's going to be evaluated at each time step. The other options are maximum, minimums, etc. But I want to see how it's going throughout the analysis. So press OK and you can see the X position highlighted here. You need to select result sets as well and then click the button to create the graph. So that's our analysis definition one, the measure, which is the X position, and that's the time. So in 0.2 seconds, it's traveling about 140 millimeters in the X direction. So let's close that and add another measure. This time it's going to be um, named Y position. So that will correspond to the height. Again, the point will correspond to point zero in world coordinate system measurements and rather than magnitude I want to look at the Y component and press OK on that and I can click on Y position for analysis definition 1 click on the toolbar to graph it and I can see how the ball is traveling in space um, so it's reaching a maximum of about uh, 25 meters so if I click on that point I can see at the bottom what was the time and what was the measure etc. I can click on both graphs so create um, a simultaneous plot of the X position and Y position or the other option is uh, to click on this one and graph measure separately and then when I do that I get two graphs and what you can also do is if you go back to your simulation and the playback so let's start our playback here 
we need to close this first of all, but leave the window of the graph open. If I go and play the playback, what you'll see is that uh, the ball is moving in the air and the analysis definition graphs are showing where the ball is at what particular frame. So that looks good and we can close that and close this window and regenerate so that the ball returns back to its original location. The next uh, thing you can bring into your simulation is possibly to enter a termination condition. So you can specify a termination condition looking at a particular measure um, so that the analysis stops when, for example, the ball um, falls below the zero height reference point. And that's usually uh, no problem and uh, works okay. I think the biggest problem the students found in this tutorial was uh, making the ball um, bounce on a floor. So I'll show you creating a, a table top, let's say, and similar to the floor example in the tutorial, we'll assemble it with the ball and then um, create our 3D contact surfaces so that we'll make the ball bounce on that table. So we can exit, first of all, mechanism. Let's save and exit. And then um, we want to create a, a new part. And let's call it, say, a table. Let's say table one. Press OK. And I want to create it um, as a basic extruded shape. So we can go to extrude on that right bottom plane. Uh, simple rectangle. Um, and then we can give it some dimensions. Um, let's say I want to measure from that point to the reference line here. And also from that point to this reference, we'll put in there. And the thickness is defined there already. So we can change that to, let's say, a fairly heavy 50 millimeters. And that distance, let's make it um, 400. That distance, let's make that same 400. So that's the cross section of the table, which I'll extrude um, in this direction. So let's say, that's extruded one meters. So that's a fairly sturdy table, um, which is meter long and um, 800 millimeters wide. Okay, so I want to assemble this with the ball part and then make the ball bounce on this table. So Let's give it a material property first of all and make the units consistent. So under model properties, uh, let's change the units to Newton seconds. Um, press OK. So in this case, I created the model already, so I want to make sure that it's going to be interpreting dimensions. But that should be OK here. So close that. and. I need to assign a material property as well. Let's say another type of steel. Yes, and OK. And I can check the information about mass properties. Again, uh, that's giving me the, the weight of this or the mass of this table as uh, 0.3 tons. So that's a fairly heavy. Um, table of course. But this is going to be essentially a rigid part so um, the mass of it isn't going to be affecting the simulation at all. So save this table 
and then we can go back and activate activate our assembly and we want to put the table in and assemble it so that it is just touching the um, the ball at the bottom to assemble the table go to assemble dialog and call the table one part and we can place it anywhere we like just now and we need to use some constraints to align it with um, the assembly datum planes so this is a part that's essentially going to represent ground so we can use these constraints um, so the one I want to use is coincident so for example this face of the table I want to make coincident with the assembly right datum plane and also the this face or this front datum plane on the part on the table make that coincident with the assembly front so that works okay the other thing i want to do is make the table top surface a certain distance from the assembly top surface so that the ball is essentially just touching the tabletop so we can do that under placement if you notice that we can we've created these two coincident constraints so far i can add another constraint a component item is going to be the top face of the table and the assembly item is going to be assembly top datum plane and instead of a coincident i want to create a distance and I want to put around say minus 10 millimeters there so that will put the table just in contact at the bottom of the ball if you remember the ball was assembled exactly on the centroid of this assembly datum plane and the ball radius is uh, 10 millimeters so that's why the table top has to be minus 10 millimeters from the assembly top dot on play so i'm happy with these constraints and you can close the dashboard and accept that position so that looks okay to me um, so the table is placed fine and i can um, unselect the display of these so i can get a better view of the um, the ball and the tabletop the next thing to do is to repeat the simulation in mechanism so that the ball bounces on the table. So we can do that under applications, mechanisms. Um, if you do repeat dialysis without defining any contacts, you'll find that the ball will just pass through this table. So what we'll need to do, first of all, is to define contact surfaces between the tabletop and the ball. So let's go and define them and you can find this toolbar button 3D contacts we can use that to define these uh, surfaces so we can first of all select the top face of the table and then um, if you open this references you'll find uh, it's asking for another reference and that's the ball surface so these are the two surfaces that's going to come into contact. If you go to the contact tab here, you can define contact properties. Rather than default, I want to change that to use values. Poisson's ratio is defined, Young's modulus is defined, and damping is quite high, so for one of the surfaces, let's try zero damping initially. See what happens again for the other surface. Let's do zero damping and see um, what that will create. So press OK. Um, and I can run the analysis again. So we can redefine 
analysis conditions. So, so let's change that to uh, say half a second and frame rate. I may want to change that frame rate a little bit so I get a bit more precision. So 500 frames. That's going to be 500 frames a second and 0 0.002 uh, time interval between frames. So initial condition state is the same as before. No termination conditions. And we'll press OK. And then right click on the analysis and do run. So it's doing the simulation OK. It's showing me that the ball is bouncing. And every time it gets closer to the contact surface, that simulation takes just a bit longer. So if I wanted to play back what happened, I can do play, animate, so increase the speed, so you can see how the ball is bouncing back on the table. Because we haven't applied any damping on the surfaces, the ball is actually coming back to its original height every time. But what you can do is close that and apply some measures to see what's happening to the actual height of this ball. So if you go to measures, our X and Y positions were already defined. So if you want to, let's say, look at the uh, Y position, graph it, you can find that um, it's bouncing uh, to the same height. Let's see what happens if we change the damping on that surface. So if we go back to our contact definition, and you can find these under connections, under the mechanism tree, and you find the 3D contacts are defined. You can open this up and then see that there's a ground part and a body part. Let's change that, say, for the whole definition. And that opens up the references dialog and also the contact properties dialog. And under use references, Let's say for side one, which was the balls, uh, the floor or the tabletop surface, let's enter a small damping coefficient there and see what happens. So we can accept that and we can rerun our analysis. Run. Um, say yes. And we can see that. It's still bouncing OK. Go back to playbacks and then play. Increase speed. It looks like its height is reducing in time. So we can measure it and see what happened. So if you go to measures again and look at the Y position under analysis definition one and graph it. And you can see that the position of the ball, the maximum height it has reached, is um, reducing at, uh, after each bounce because we have applied a damping value. Okay, that will end the ball projectile simulation and you can repeat this um, for the tutorial uh, one example for our mechanisms class.